Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk about 1984's Gremlins. Um, this movie was produced by Steven Spielberg, and it was directed by Joe Dante. Joe Dante, up to that point, had directed Piranha in the 70s, The Howling, <clears throat> which was a financial success, and but even by the, back then it was uh, had pretty good reviews. And then he had directed a segment in The Twilight Zone, the movie, which Steven Spielberg also produced and directed a, se a segment as well. So when the Gremlin script came around, Steven Spielberg hired Joe Dante. Joe Dante found out later that one of the reasons Spielberg hired him was because he was a big fan of The Howling. Um, now, the script was written by Chris Columbus. Chris Columbus ha has written or directed movies like Young Sherlock Holmes in the 80s, The Goonies. He wrote The Goonies movie, and then uh, he had directed Home Alone 1 and 2. He directed the first and maybe the second Harry Potter. I know definitely the first. I'm not sure about the second. He wrote movies and produced movies like Christmas with the Cranks. Um, I think he directed Mrs. Doubtfire as well. He was involved with The Christmas Chronicles a couple of years ago on Netflix with uh, Kurt Russell as Santa Claus. His original script, though, was a little bit more darker and violent. Um, and actually, even though Gremlins is, gets a little violent, um, even for a family movie, um, the original script, if you've seen the movie, there's a, there's a part in the movie where the mother discovers the gremlins when they hatch out of cocoons, and she has to fight them off. Well, in the original script, the gremlins kill the dog, the family dog, and cut the mother's head, head off and throws it down the stairs, and Billy sees this. Obviously, that would have pushed the movie into R-rated territory, and they didn't want that. Spielberg or Joe Dante wanted to cut down on the violence and make it more of a family movie which later kind of bit them a little bit, which I'll explain later on in the review. Um, now, the movie starts, stars uh, Zach Galleon, Phoebe Cates, uh, which everybody remembers, especially if you're a young man in the 80s from uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I'll leave it at that. Judge Reinhold's in it as, I can't remember the name of his character now, even though I just watched it the other night, but he plays uh, Billy's manager at the bank. He's like the assistant manager. But he's over Billy because he's, he's just a complete dick to him. The great Dick Miller's in there. Hoyt Axton plays the father. Um, and the movie takes place at Christmas time. I, I would say it's a Christmas movie, for sure. It's about family. I mean, it concentrates on the Gremlin stuff, but it's about family and, you know, family struggling together to try to make ends meet. Although they don't dwell on those things, but they are brought up. <clears throat> and being in the movie, it shows Billy's dad, Hoyt Axton, in Chinatown, in some city. I don't know if they specify if it's New York or somewhere else. And he's on the hunt for a unique Christmas gift for his son. And this kid takes him to his grandfather's shop. It's in the basement of this building. And he's looking around, and all of a sudden he hears this singing. And he doesn't know what it is, and he uncovers this, like, cage, and he discovers what the grandfather tells him is a mogwai. And he's like, oh, I gotta have this. My son will love this thing. And he's offering the grandfather $200 cash for it. And the grandfather refuses to sell it to him. And the grandson thinks his grandfather's crazy because they need the money. So the grandson makes a deal with Billy's dad that if he meets him in the alley, he'll get him the mogwai and he can have it for the $200. Which happens, and Billy's dad takes it home and gives it to Billy. And he explains there's three rules with these things. Number one, never take it out in the daylight because the sunlight will kill it. Slash, they don't like bright light. Never get it wet, so no bass, nothing like that. Don't give it a drink of water, and don't feed it after midnight, which doesn't technically doesn't make any sense because isn't any time after midnight after midnight, no matter what time of day it is, it's after midnight. Semantics. Who cares? Let's move on. It is a classic at this point, so it doesn't really matter if you're on if you're on board for the ride. You don't really care about that little oversight. But anyway. Billy calls him Gizmo. That's the name. They decide to call it. And at first, everything's fine. You know, Billy works his job at the bank, and he's kind of like this geeky kid who wants to, wants to draw for a living. That's, that's his passion. But he's kind of stuck at home trying to help his parents pay the bills. His dad's an inventor who has been going through a rough patch of selling his inventions. So Billy works at the bank to help make ends meet. And he has a crush on Phoebe Cates' character, who lives across the street. 
and I've known for a while, and he really wants to be her boyfriend. Um, and they have like a sweet interaction interactions together. Um, funny enough, one scene in the movie, Phoebe Cates' character explains to Billy why they don't celebrate Christmas, which I won't get into here, but it was actually quite controversial at the time, and the studio wanted um, Joe Dante to get take it out of the movie, and Joe Dante said, no, I, I'm leaving it, and Steven Spielberg backed him, and they left it. Um, but I know it was controversial back then, because um, it kind of gives away something. It's it's a little bit of a dark thing right there, but I won't say what she says, but if you've ever seen it, you know what she says. That's kind of one of the reasons why we haven't let our son watch it yet. My wife and I, our son's seven and be eight, and we haven't let him watch it. Mostly because, well, I think he'd be scared a little bit by it, because there are some scary parts if you're a young kid. And that scene in particular, because he still believes, you know, in certain things, so we don't want to ruin that. Um, anyway, as the movie goes on, Billy gets Gizmo wet, and he multiplies. And the other Mogwais are not like Gizmo. They're different personalities. One's very mischievous. Actually, they're all more mischievous than Gizmo. Gizmo's kind of laid back and just hangs out. And then eventually, we get to the point where they eat after midnight, and they go into these green cocoons. And when they finally hatch, chaos ensues because these little green monsters just start killing people, wrecking the town, just causing mass chaos. And Billy has to stop them. Him and Phoebe Cates' character have to stop them. And there's a section in the movie where they're all gathered in a movie theater, all the gremlins, and are watching Snow White. And Billy tracks them down. <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, he blows the theater up and kills all of them except for one, Stripe, who's the main gremlin. And Billy follows them to a department store and they have it out and with Gizmo's help and Phoebe Cates' character's help, they end up killing the last gremlin. And at the end of the movie, they're in the living room with Gizmo and... The grandfather from being in the movie shows up and takes Gizmo back, saying, you people are not ready for the responsibility of this creature, and takes him back, and that's the end of the movie. Now, being it's 1984, all the creature effects were done practically, obviously, and through animatronics and puppetry. And even though you can see some flaws, if you look close enough, they look great. Um, that's why they sell so many toys still to this day. You see a lot of merchandise around the Gremlins. I have some, I have a a gremlin, and I have a couple mogwais at home. Um, so, and so it's funny enough, here's a little, at the time when they made the movie, because they filmed it all on a universal backlot. Um, and at the beginning of the movie, they show the town square. And if you look close enough, you can, you'll notice that it's the same town square from Back to the Future. And to the right of the frame, they don't show the whole building, but it's the clock tower from Back to the Future. All they did was dress it up with snow and Christmas decorations and just a few different things, but it's the exact same. They filmed in the exact same spot. But the Gremlins and the Mogwais themselves cost between thirty and $40,000 a piece. So when the actors left or crew members or even the director at the end of the day, they were searched. Their cars were searched and any bags were searched because the studio didn't want any of that stuff getting off the lot or out into public view. They were trying to keep it a secret. So that's a little tidbit. And when this movie came out, it was rated PG. And some it got a little bit of backlash for being too violent. But <clears throat> the MPAA justified it wasn't violent enough for an R. And there was no PG-13 rating back then. We'll skip ahead to when Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom came out. They created a PG-13 rating then because that movie got slapped with an R. Spielberg contested it and they helped with Spielberg's Help! they created the PG-13 rating that we all know today. But back then it wasn't. When Gremlins came out, it didn't exist. And I will say, yeah, the movie is probably a little too dark and a little too violent for a PG rating. Because there are some dark spots. I mean, the Gremlins do cause havoc and they do kill some people. I mean, they don't show the graphic violence on screen, but they do do some things that are, you know, questionable. <laughs> Especially for a family movie. But I would give the movie an 8 out of 10. It's a classic at this point. Um, I just watched it the other night. It's the first time I've actually watched it in a few years, but it's it's a fun movie. It's still fun to this day. The performances are good. The effects look great. 
Um, thank goodness this was before CGI, because I love the animatronic and puppetry work. Which, when he made the sequel in 90, Gremlins 2, Rick Baker did the effects in the second one. He didn't do them for the first one, and the Gremlins even looked better in the second one, in the Mogwais. Um, funny enough, Joe Dante, in interviews, said he prefers the second one to the first one. The second one's not quite as serious. It's more slapstick Warner Brothers cartoonish. Not that the first one doesn't have the light-hearted moments and some comedy, but the second one's definitely more comedy than elements of horror. But yeah, overall, I give it an 8 out of 10. Um, if you've ever seen it, or if you watch it every year for at Christmas time, or, you know, let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Um, it's definitely a movie I enjoy watching, and I'll show it to my son when I think he's old enough, maybe next year. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.